Hey, everybody, this is Troy Alexander. Listen, I'm excited to be back one more time right here on Hamilton Radio. Listen, I'm giving God all the praise, all the glory. I'm telling God, thank you for everything that he's done for me for a, just to see another day, another day that God has made. He's allowed us to be able to get up and tell God, thank you. Listen, I was talking to somebody there where I said, listen, this is about a mindset of a declaration. We're going to go through a whole lot of stuff in life and here and there. But I'm telling you right now, to have your mind made up that I'm going to declare and say, no matter what's going on, I know God got me. Listen, I did a little video this morning, right? And I said to myself, if, if, if God can't keep what he creates, then we in trouble. But I'm telling you, God has the ability to keep what he creates. If God made us in the likeness of his image, it, God said, I made you for who I am today. And listen, whatever God creates and molds and put together, I'm telling you, God is able to sustain it. So I'm here today to encourage you, to let you know, no matter what's going on, God is able to keep you and, and, and sustain you and hold on to you. Because I'm telling you right now, we're getting ready for something greater that's about to take place in our life. And I'm getting ready, y'all. God's getting ready to move and, and, and do something greater. And, and uh, Doc G, I'm trying to see the share on my Facebook page. So if you get a moment, uh, but I'm telling you right now, it's wonderful. I'm excited about what God is doing, and we're just getting everything ready for our show. But listen, I need you to hold on to what God has declared for your life. Because I'm telling you right now, it's not over. Whatever's going on, God said, I got you. God said, I'm able to keep you. I'm able to sustain you. That no matter what's going on, I need you to know that God is still God. And he has not changed. Everything about who God is remains the same. And I'm telling you right now, this is, this is something. Listen, God said, I got purpose for your life. That no matter what's going on, I'm able to sustain you. And I'm going to say this, no matter how big the storm might get in your life, I need you to know that God is still, he has not changed. But his power and his authority remains the same. I told somebody today, I said, listen, the reason why we're dealing with what we're dealing with, going through, because God has qualified us and is getting ready to take us to another level. And that we can become a witnesses. For his word, that's already been declared. The word of God has already been written. It's already been spoken over our life. Now it's about our faith coming into agreement and into alignment with what God has said. I'm telling you, I, I, when our faith can begin to match God's promises, look out, doctor. Look out, because I'm telling you, some greater stuff is about to happen. And listen, but it's important that our faith realigns with what God has declared for our life. And that's what I'm talking about. This is what I'm, 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 I'm getting ready to receive something greater that God has for my life. And I'm going to say this. God will not give it to you if he did not know you could take it with him in your life. The weight, God said, is not so heavy that, that, that you can't get through it and, and, and go over it with his promise in your life. So I'm here to let you know that everything that God has declared for your life is coming to pass. I need you to hold on to God. I need you to hold on to everything that God has promised for your life. I told somebody, I said, listen, change your attitude. Yes. Listen, I'm, I'm going in with a new attitude. I'm going to receive and get everything God has declared for my life. My peace, I'm, I declare it. My victory, I declare it. My overflow. I declare, you better start declaring some stuff right now, wherever you are, no matter how dark the night is, begin to declare some stuff in God. God said, I will not allow you to go through it and not have the victory out of it because somebody got to see the greatness of God in your life to get to know who I am better. So I'm here tonight to let you know I need you to hold on to what God has declared for your life. Listen, I got a few things I got, I got to do, but listen, I put this post on Facebook, and, and, and the post was, if you're looking for peace on the external expressway, please make a U-turn. Let me say that again. If you are looking for peace on the external expressway, please make a U-turn. I'm telling you right now, 
Your peace lies within your mind being stayed upon Christ. You ain't got to keep your mind. The Bible says those that keep their mind stayed on him. God said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. So if I'm looking for peace from people, you're going down the wrong lane. If you're looking for peace from your job, you're going down the wrong, you're going the wrong way. If you're looking for peace in your money, you're going down. God said, if you keep your mind stayed upon me, God said, I'll keep you in what? Perfect peace. God said, I got peace for you that passes all understanding. This is a peace of God that, that I'm in the middle of a storm. Waves coming over the ship. Uh, uh, the boat being tossed to and fro. But I still got my peace. The people are talking about me, but I still got my peace. People lying on me, but I still got my peace. That's the peace that God said I've declared for your life. Please make a U-turn. So no matter what's going on on the outside, you keep your peace on the inside. God said, I gave you my power. I gave you my authority. And what did Jesus do? He looked at the storm, looked at the winds and the waves. He said, peace, what? Be still. I'm telling you. But before that, let me just say that he did that for people on the ship. But before they called him, Jesus was asleep on the ship. What? In the middle of the storm. So I'm here to let you know that no matter how, how bad that storm might be raging in your life, God said, I've declared peace for your life. And I mean this thing. You got to mean this thing. Get, get your face, get your attitude. Y'all know how we used to do on the street, right? Yeah, yeah, you're like, come on. Listen, I'm going in. I'm going to get what belongs to me. That's the same mindset with God. It's, 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 I'm determined to get what God got for me. And, I, and I'm going to take, I'm going to lay hold of it. God said, lay hold on it. God said, everywhere the sole of your feet tread on. God said, I've given it to you. God said, it's got your name on it, but you got to go get it. Lord, have mercy. God said, it belongs to you. But you got to have a mindset that I'm going to get what God has declared for my life. So I'm here tonight to encourage you, to let you know, hold on to what God has declared for your life. Get ready to receive something greater that God has for your life. I'm telling you, this is about a mindset. Put your mind. Take, take your, listen, a whole lot of stuff going but God said, set your mind, set your things on things above, your affection, on th not on things on this earth. The reason why I'm holding on because I'm not going back to where I came from. God brought me from a mighty long way. And I'm telling you, I'm holding on to my peace. The storm may uh, 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 come up, but God said, don't you worry about the storm. God said, you hold on to my word, hold on to my promise, everything that I've declared for your life. I got I need you to hold on to. Why? Because I'm bigger than your storm. Lord, have mercy. God just said, I'm bigger than your storm. I'm bigger than your problem. I'm bigger than the test. Matter of fact, I had to approve the test before it showed up at your door. God said, I had to give the approval so, so that you know that I can what, do all things through Christ. That's not just words on a page. God said, you can do what? All things through Christ. That gives me strength. This is not by my own might, but this is by the power of God. God said, I'm not going to allow something that's bigger than me to show up at your door. God said, I'm in control of this. Make it be known. You need to let the enemy, let the situation, let every God's in control of this. God, God said, I got you. <laughs> God said, if I can take care of the birds of the air, how much more about you? Lord, have mercy. God said, I got you. God said, I got you. I did another uh, post on Facebook coming from Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 33. It says, wonders happen when we keep our focus right. Peter walked on water because he's focused, because his focus was right. Make your focus right, and then everything else will get right. I'm telling you. And, and, and can you imagine? Peter walked on the water toward Jesus, but his mind and his eyes were focused on what was right, and that was Jesus. Keep your mind and keep your eyes focused on what God has declared for my life.
If I'm going through some hurt and pain, my focus is on with your stripes, I'm healed. If I got tears in my eyes, I'm looking at the word that says, weeping may endure for a night, Lord, have mercy, but joy cometh in the morning. God said, I need you to keep your eyes and keep your mind stayed upon me because I got you. I didn't bring you this far to leave you now. Lord, have mercy. God said, I brought you to a place so that you can be a declaration and a testimony of my promise in your life. So I'm here tonight to let you know, hold on to what God has declared for your life. And I'm going to say this, don't go by your feelings. Oh, no, <laughs> we can't go by our feelings, y'all. Oh, no, we got to go by what's been written. Because sometimes we feel what we feel is different than what God said. I'm a witness. I've been there. Where are you, God? I'm going to talk about the book of Judges in a little while. But, but, but has anybody ever been there? Lord, where are you, God? I'm, I'm, I'm serving you. I'm, I'm, I'm obeying your word. But, but the storms still keep on raging. God said, what I need you to understand is the winds aren't there to destroy you, but they're there to push you to a place that I need you to go. The storms, if you understand, when storms come up, stuff in the ocean moves. God said, I'm trying to move you to a place. And sometimes it's the storm that's going to get you there. Lord, have mercy. God said, God said I, I, I might have tried to get you a, another way, but God said, but God says that I am taking you to a place that, that is greater than where you are right now. So I'm telling you right now, God is getting ready to do a mighty work in your life. And, and, and it's moving. It's greater. God said the storm is moving. And I need you to know that, 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 that the storm is moving greater than what you could have ever imagined. But God said it's the winds, it's the storms. That's taking you to that place. And I need you to hold on to what I've declared for your life. No matter what, no matter what is going on. And I'm telling you right now, God is moving. Anybody know that? God is moving. I'm telling you right now, I need you to know that no matter what's going on, God is still in control. Listen, I wrote this on Facebook the other day. I did a, 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 a project. I am every morning. It comes on and God gives us a word. And listen, I need you to know this. I am going to stay in that place of rest. I am going to stay in a place of rest. Make this your declaration right now. And after you have made this declaration, prepare yourself to hold on to it despite what may come your way. Because what happens is after we speak what God has promised, we cannot be surprised by a storm that will try to come and take back, make us take back what we have declared. I'm going to stop right there. Whenever you make a declaration of God's promises, don't you be surprised by the enemy and stuff that start coming your way to try to make you turn back and, and take back what God has declared in your life. Don't you be surprised by that. Don't you be surprised. Matter of fact, you need to sometimes expect it to happen. Because that's the enemy's job is to distract you and to take you from the place and the focus. God, God said, I need you to focus on what I've declared for your life and do what you have to do to hold on to what God has promised in your life. I'm telling you, let me read on a little bit more. Uh, but remember who is in control, even of the storm. God would not give you more than what you can handle through him. Let me say that again. The weight of that situation is not more than the God you are trusting in. Think about when a person is trying to build muscle to become stronger. More weight must be added to the exercise machine so that person is using, that that person is using. Why? God said, I am only making you stronger in my promise so that your testimony can become greater and those around you will know that it had to be God. 
the only God that kept you and delivered you. The results of your tests is allowing those around you to know that with God, they can pass the test. I'm going to say that. Listen, God is allowing you to pass this test so that those people around you will know they can pass it too. I'm telling you, Doc G, listen, there is some stuff that people are dealing with, and they need to know not just about Abraham and about Moses and Ruth and this one. They need to see somebody right now that's got a testimony that God can deliver and God can set free. So I need you to hold on to God. I'm telling you, and, and, and trust God. God said, I'm making you a witness. I, I, I'm sitting on the witness stand right now. God said, I'm making you a witness to my word. That's what God is doing. So somebody else can get to know who he is. Why? Because they've read about stuff. They're seeing a whole lot of stuff. But they need to see somebody they can touch, somebody they can feel. And say, Troy, how did you make it? I, I'm going to say, but God. <laughs> but God. It, he's the one that turned my life around. Troy, how did you get to a point where you stuttered as a child, couldn't talk? But now I've got two radio shows where on Hamilton Radio. But God, I'm telling you right now, this is something that you need. You need to hold on to God and, 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 know, and trust God. I'm telling you, y'all, I feel this thing strong. I feel God stronger. I did another post on Facebook the other day called, I am battle tested. Yes, I am. The reason why we're going through, because God is making us battle tested, doctor, so that when the next storm come, I don't waver like I did on, on the last one. But I can stand my ground. I can put on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation. I can take my sword of the, Lord, the shield of faith, and I can go to battle and not have one doubt in my mind that God's going to deliver me and bring me out. If your bank account is low, it don't change who God is. Lord, have mercy. If they're laying off people on the job, it don't change who God is. If the people in your house are coming up again, it don't change who God is. It just makes the God in you stronger. It's about a relationship with God. And I'm here to let you know this is real. God is real. We right here, an hour of faith on Hamilton Radio. This is real. I didn't see all of this. But, but God said, there's a place for you. There's a place that I have for your life. And I need you to hold on to God. No matter what's going on, tell somebody, listen, tell God, thank you. No matter what you're dealing with. The Bible says, in all things give thanks. This is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. No, it don't feel good. It, it, but I'm telling you, don't you go by what it feel, nor by what it look like. Because I'm telling you, y'all, some stuff don't look good. <laughs> Do I got a witness? <laughs> some stuff, it don't look good. But don't you go by what it look like. I'm telling you right now. Listen, I got some stuff I gotta, I'm going to share at the end of the show. But listen. Our word tonight is coming from uh, uh, the book of Judges. It's on the screen, the book of Judges, chapter 6. Uh, and I'm coming from verses 12, uh, 12 through 16. Lord, have mercy. Read with me again. The book of Judges, chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. And it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with me, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon. Lord, have mercy. Said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Lord, have mercy. And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Let me say this. I told you before. Has anybody ever been there? Where, where, where God, where are you, God? How you bring me out of one thing and then you brought me into another thing. <laughs> yes, I've been there. But I'm telling you, I'm still here. God said, I got purpose for it. God had purpose in all things. Because you know why? 
Somebody needs to know that he's a healer. But then that means somebody got to go through some sickness. Somebody needs to know that he's a warrior and know that, you know what, been to the point where it didn't look so good. The numbers didn't equate for you. Win. You should not have won that race. But God said, I made you the first and not the last. God said, I made you the head and not the tail. But God said, I need you to be in a place so I can shift you to another place. But I need you to go with me real quick on verse 13. He said, this word came to me when this conversation was going. He said, I have given you an assignment to be, to, to be, um, to be, to bring your resume up to another level so that the next higher position that becomes available, you become qualified for. God said, what you're dealing with is only enhancing your resume so that when you face the next test, God said, you have already been qualified. God said, I am building up your strength and your faith in my word, but it's through the test. God said, it's through the test that I'm bringing you to another place. And I need you to know that no matter what you're dealing with, God said, it's going to be added to your resume. Because I'm not going to give you more than what you can handle. I'm telling you right now. Verse 14. Lord, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel. From the hand of the Midianites, have not I sent thee? Verse 15. And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Verse 16. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. Thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. I'm telling you right now, don't you worry about the numbers. The numbers might not, you might be one against a thousand. But when you got God, God said, I got your back. I got you. Don't you worry about this battle. I hear God saying the battle is the Lord's. It does not belong to you. But God said, I need you to stand your ground. I need you to call on my name, Jesus. When the, when the storms get greater, make your praise greater. Make your shout greater. And don't you ever stop testifying. Say, Lord, I thank you. I got pain in my, but thank you for my healing, God. I give you praise right now. God let Gideon know. The Lord said, listen, you're going to come out of this. And you're going to defeat that as one man. I'm telling you right now, I need you to hold on to what God has declared for your life. How can the Lord bring me out of this? God said, because I'm God. God said, it's not about how much you have, what you don't have. God said, it's about your faith. And God said, I need you. Do you know how, how I got to this place? Because I was being tested. I was being tested, Doc G. I, 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 and, and guess what? Many times I failed. But one day I got up, I said, God, I'm not going to fail this test again. I made a declaration in my mind that I am not going to fail this test. I said, the next thing that comes up, I'm going to tell God thank you. And then I started saying it in church. I did, y'all. I did. I began, I, I began to say, to, to, to the whole congregation, tell God thank you. And now everybody, more people are saying, tell God thank you. I was going, but tell what? <laughs> Always have a response to whatever it is that you're dealing with. And I've learned, the Bible says, in all things give thanks. Everything. I got, I got some bad. Thank you, Lord. Don't understand it. But God, I praise you for healing it, God. For turning it around in my life. Give God praise today. And tell God, thank you for what he's doing in your life. And I'm telling you, this right here, let me know. Listen, we all get to, Lord, I... Yeah, but God said, I'm still here with you. God said, I won't leave you, and I won't forsake you, but I'll be with you always. And I'm here to let you know. The reason why we do this, please, if you get a moment, read 1 Thessalonians chapter 15, 
verse 51 and 52. We're getting ready for a trumpet to sound. We're getting ready to meet Jesus in the midair. And I'm telling you right now, we're getting ready for something greater that's going to take place in our life. And I'm telling you right now, I made this my declaration, y'all. And I'm going to tell everybody that I know. Doc G, I'm going to tell every, I'm going to shout it from the mountaintops. And I'm going to say, listen, it, it's about a relationship with Christ. And guess what? You're not here by yourself. No, no, no. We're going in this together, y'all. And I made it everything that God has promised for my life. I'm going to get, Doc G. I'm going to get it. And I said before, I did a, um, a, a workshop type session, which I'll talk about at the 7 o'clock show. Um, but the one thing I told them, I said, I'm not afraid no more. And God said, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. When you become unafraid, you become powerful. Lord, have mercy. Powerful in the kingdom work of God. When you stop worrying about what people think about you and what people say about you or even what they do to you, when I know that they can't just do whatever. They, they, the enemy got to go to God first and say, Lord, like he did Job, may I touch him, Lord? And if God says yes, then I'm going to say, Lord, you're taking me to another place. But I'm here to let you know that every test is to make you greater as a witness in who God is. So somebody else can know Troy, how did you make it when you didn't have food to eat? Not knowing how he's going to make it to the next day. But God showed up. Troy, how did you get to a point? You, you, you're living paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes you don't. You're praying that the check don't go through. You're praying. But God showed up. I'm telling you right now. This is what God, God said. I'm, I'm, I'm here to let you know that I'm your provider. And let me say this. Do not equate your wealth or what you have with the promises of God coming through for your life. Because this is about a spiritual walk with God. Because this is not about natural things. Yes, God going to give us houses and land, yeah, all that. But God knows how much we can take. This is a spiritual. And I said to myself, do you know how much peace, peace is worth? Do you know how much people would pay to have the peace of God that you got or that you're going to get? I'm telling you, it has no value. It's priceless. I'm telling you, but when you get into a place of God where the peace of God is reigning over your life, that no matter what season it is, you still know you're blessed. That's a powerful place to be in God. And I'm here to let you know. We, we, we praying for those that are going through. I'm going through stuff too. I told somebody, but I've learned how to, how to shift myself a little bit and see it differently. I don't see it like it's blocking me. I see it like it's keeping me and directing me to another place. Yeah, I see it. I see the detour doctrine differently now. I don't see it as it's stopping me, but I see it as showing me another way to get to where I got to go. So, my trust is holding in God. I need you to hold on to God and not give up on God. But, 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 but hold on to no matter, what's it, no matter what's going on, to keep your faith and your trust in God. I got one more scripture that I'm going to share with you. And then I'm going to just give some updates of some upcoming things that's going on. Go with me real quick to Joshua chapter 23. I'm sorry, 24 and verse 13. Go with me to Joshua, chapter 24, and verse 13. And this scripture right here, Lord have mercy. If you need an encouragement, <laughs> if you need an encouragement, this verse says, I have given you a land for which you did not labor, Lord have mercy, cities which you built not, and, and you dwell in them. Of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted, which ye planted not, do ye eat? The Lord said, I got some places that has your name on it that you ain't even worked for. 
God said, I got some cities. Lord, have mercy. Anybody want a city? I know I do, Doc. I want my own city. Yeah, yeah. God got some cities. God said that you didn't even build, but it's got your name on it. God said, I got some businesses. I'm telling, listen, how much on the radio? Y'all better get ready. I'm telling you, it, it, it is going to grow to, an, it, to, to a place that cannot be contained. I'm telling you, I hear God saying the blessings will not only come upon you, but overtake you. Listen, you won't have room in the storehouses. God said it's going to overflow. I remember that there were some folks out there fishing. Didn't catch nothing all day long. But Jesus said, at my word, go back again. There was so much fish, Doc G, they had to call other boats and say, the blessing is too much for us. We want to give you some of it. I'm telling you right now, God said, I need you to know that God has some stuff for you that you're not going to have to work for. It's just going to show up and say, I'm here because God told me to come and talk to you and, and, and write you a check and give you some money. I saw your video, Doc G. I, I saw the blessing of God that, yeah, yeah, I saw it, Doc G. I'm telling you, God, God said, I'm, I'm going to give you some stuff that you didn't even ask for. I'm telling you, Doc G, I know, listen, God got some stuff for us that he, that we ain't even, I, but God said, the people are going to come and say, I was told to send this to you. I was told to bring it to you. I was told to give it to you. I don't know who told me, but somebody told me to come and give this check to you. Somebody come, told, come and give you this building. Because y'all know I've been claiming a building, right? God, I, somebody going to say, Troy, I was told to give you this building. All, all built, more, paid up in full, paid in full. Taxes paid up in full for years. You ain't got to worry about taxes. I'm telling you, open your mouth and declare what God has for your life. This is real, y'all. This is real. I'm not talking, this ain't just uh, uh, on 6 o'clock on Thursday night. Oh, no. But every day when you get up, Lord have mercy. God said, I got blessings for you. When you go out, I got blessings for you. So I'm here to let you know, do not think that the enemy is going to sit back and say, oh, go enjoy your blessings, Troy. Oh, no. He's going to do his job. I'm always telling my wife and my mom, and those, I said, listen, they said, yep, he's doing his job. And, and, and you know what? Sometimes I have to applaud the enemy. Because he's doing, listen, he's doing what he was born to do. So, so why am I worrying about him? I'm going to do what I got to do. And that's praise God and give my life to God. I'm telling you right now. So I need you to hold on. We are here every Thursday night, Hour of Faith on Hamilton Radio. Listen, stay connected with us. If, if you want to be a sponsor to the show, if you want to advertise your, your business, your, your church service, what have you, I give you all the details, but um, email me, call to inspire at AOL.com. I am inspired Troy at gmail.com, m.troyalexander at yahoo.com. Stay connected with us. We on Facebook, Troy Alexander. We on Instagram, a underscore word underscore of underscore faith. A word of faith and underscore in between each word. Follow us on YouTube, Troy Alexander. Website, calltoinspire.org. I'm telling you right now, you're getting ready for something greater. I'm, 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 I, I got so much to say on the next show. I'm so excited about it. That's the Dreamer Show. So for those who don't know, this show is an hour of faith about uh, a, 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 talking about the greatness of God and promises of God and, and salvation and greatness and, and his peace, his, his word, relationship with Christ. And then the 7 o'clock show is about inspiring dreamers people to follow their dreams no matter what's going on so stay connected with us but listen we're getting ready y'all november november 6th next wednesday night we're having our next bible book club y'all 7 30 uh 10 15 amboy avenue in edison new jersey the heritage at clara barton uh the front door is actually on fourth uh street um or Fourth Avenue, but 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 it's right off of Amboy Avenue, Fourth Street. That's like my notes, right? So, and we're coming from Luke chapter eight. If you're in the area, it's nothing like experiencing it live, in person. 
It's going to be live on Facebook as well. But that's next Wednesday. Mark your calendar, November 6th, 730, Facebook Live. But meet us there. It's a powerful thing when we can get together, have a conversation of, about God's word and God's promises. Coming from Luke chapter 8. This is not Bible study. This is a Bible book club. So all of us just share what we got from the chapter and inspire each other and empower each other. And the last thing I'll say for upcoming events, December 7th, y'all, Saturday, 530, we are going to be having a CD launch. Yes, a CD launch based on the book, I Am What God Said I Am, Volume 2. And it's amazing at the Jesus Book and Gift Store, 675 US 1 Island, New Jersey, 088. Three zero, And guess what, y'all? We are going to be doing live praise, praise and worship in the building. We're going to be singing live in the store, y'all. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a powerful evening. Come and join us and, and support this wonderful store, the G-Book the G Gift Store in Island, New Jersey. Powerful, wonderful. So we're going to be there. But I just want to close in the next few minutes and encourage your hearts. But hold on to God. We're getting ready, y'all. Getting ready for something greater in God. And I'm excited about what God is doing, not only in my life, but in your life as well. And I, and I mean this thing. I'm, I'm expecting. I told y'all that I'm going to be a billionaire. I told y'all I'm going to have buildings. I told y'all we're going to uh, a studio, a photography one. That's just, I'm telling you. And, and let me just say this, I'm in a place now that if God don't do it, I still know he's able. And I'm going to still praise him. I'm going to still give him praise. Why? Because he knows what's good for me. He might, you know, I, I want it, but God knows what I'm going to do with it. And if he knows I'm not going to do right by it, then I don't want it. But I still, I still believe he's able. So the billionaire mindset, it's, it's, it's a mindset first, and then it's a reality second. God said, I need you to look for what you're expecting me to do. Do not just send up a prayer and walk away and don't look for it to show up. God said, whatever you're praying for, I need you to expect it to show up. If you're expecting healing, look for your healing. I got the word the other day that my father uh, took his last thing of chemo, but, but they got to search one, one more test they got to go through. But the man came from not having the, the control of his faculties to back to driving the truck back to church again. I'm just telling you right now what God is able to do. And I said, God, whatever you do, I'm believing you no matter what it is, no matter what the doctors say. God, I'm, I'm going to believe your report, God. And you told me in your word that with your stripes I'm healed. God, that's what I hold on to. I might not be able to tell you everything from Genesis to Revelations, but I can tell you he's a healer. I can tell you he's doing it for you. And don't let go of what God has promised for your life. You make this declaration. And you might have to shift some things in your life. Some people in your life, you might have to shift around because you're trying to get to a place. And, and I'm going to say this last thing, Doc G, then I'm going I'm to go off. Listen, some stuff you might have to let go. You might be holding on to it because you've held on, you, you've held on to it for five years or 10 years or 20 years or all your life. But when God's trying to put something new in your hand, Sometimes you got to let go of what you're already holding on to. And sometimes that can be people, places, things, whatever. But, get, but be willing to shift and receive what God has for your life. And this last thing I'll say, don't look for everybody to be happy for you. Don't look for everybody to be pleased when you make that decision and you make that declaration. Because they may not be there in the place just yet where you are. So don't be surprised by it. But be at peace by it. Knowing that you're doing what God is asking you to do. 
So hold on to God. I know I talked a little longer than I normally do tonight, but I got a lot to say. And, and so I just wanted to encourage your hearts tonight. I mean this thing. I'm, I'm about souls, y'all. I'm about people getting to know Christ so that we can make that trumpet sound. I told you. First Thessalonians, I told you. Chapter 15, verse 51 and 52. I want to be ready so that I can go into a place, y'all, where the streets are paved with gold, doctor, where, where the gates are pearl, where I got a mansion. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I might not have one, but I'm getting a mansion. God said, I'm preparing a place for you that where I am, you may be also. So be encouraged tonight. Get ready, y'all, for something great. And listen, no matter the storm that comes your way, always remember who's the master of the storm. God bless you. This is Troy Alexander on Hamilton Radio, Hour of Faith. I'll see you next Thursday right here on Hamilton at 6 p.m. right here on Hamilton. God bless in Jesus' name.